Hello students, I am Atiqur Rahman. I teach at the Department of Jaufi, Jamia Mila Islamiya, New Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the basic physics of remote sensing. With, in this module, we are going to discuss various objectives and to understand the remote sensing, we need to understand the science behind it, the physics behind it because it be, behind this remote sensing, we have uh, uh, optics of light, the energy what we use is the sun's energy in the optical remote sensing. There are different remote sensing that we will talk later in the different modules. So, in this module, we are going to talk about basically the physics of remote sensing. When I say the physics of remote sensing, that covers entirely the energy that is being used and captured by the different uh, objects which are there on the surface of the earth. So, in this the learning objective of this basic physics of remote sensing covers emittance, radiation, existence, physics of Kirchhoff law, Stephens Boltzmann's constant and there are different other laws that will be covered in this objective. So, what we have in this physics of remote sensing precisely it uses a sun's energy as I said before. Sun's energy that means any in any object at absolute 0, at the energy up above absolute 0, radiates electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy that we call is the electromagnetic radiation by the virtue of atomic and molecular vibrations. So, what we have in this, we are going to discuss, we are going to understand, we are going to see how this energy, sun's energy is going to be used by different sensor that has been designed the various by the physicists, the scientists. So, when we say the sensors, it is nothing but is a optical mechanical device that captures the energy which is being reflected back from the surface of the earth. On the surface of the earth, what all we have? We have different objects. There are two types of object. One is the human objects, human features and second is the natural features and all these features keeps on changing with the passage of time. So, natural features that changes less frequently, but the human features, human objects that keep on changing at a faster pace. So, in the physics of remote sensing, we try to see what are different signs on which the sensors and the technology that uses and acquires the energy which is being reflected back from the earth surface back to the sensor and that energy gets quantified into digital number and that number get converted into uh, satellite data and that we get for the common use. So, basically in this we are trying to see what are different laws, what are different uh, uh, interaction of energy with the different objects and what is science precisely behind it. So, that is a basic learning objective of this module in the basic physics of remote sensing. We will see little later how that I can explain you by the different diagrams because if I explain you straight away that will not be easy to understand, but it will be better to understand by showing you different diagrams how the energy comes, how the energy interacts with the atmosphere, how the in energy interacts with the surface feature on the earth and how it goes back and in this process how the energy is being quantified. So, what we see that energy, uh, sun's energy we all know that uh, is, 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 is releases energy in all the direction in equal amount all the time day and night. If we see there are different temperature at the suns at the inner surface at the middle surface of the sun and the outer surfaces of the sun that we call the photosphere. At the photos, pho photosphere the sun's energy that uh, radiates by the conversion of hydrogen to helium that is at, uh, at, at about 6000 degree Kelvin 5777 degree Kelvin that travels in all the direction and that reaches the surface of the earth. Before reaching the surface of the earth, inter it interacts with the earth atmosphere and then it reaches the surface of the earth. When it strikes the surface of the earth, the sun's energy, what happens? Three things happens. Energy gets reflected back immediately that is not being absorbed. Rest of the energy is being absorbed at, at the surface of the earth and after absorption, what happens? it slowly slowly emits because as per the law of thermodynamics 
energy cannot be stored, its energy cannot be destroyed, but it can be transformed from one form to another form. The sun's energy which comes from the sun and reaches the surface of the earth that is in the form of short wavelength because the energy is hot. So, hotter the body, shorter the wavelength. But once it goes back from the surface of the earth to the atmosphere, it is in the form of long wave. So, the energy which reflects back from the surface of the earth goes in the form of long wave radiation and reaches the sensor which are placed and at altitude of about 600, degree, 600 kilometers to 750 kilometers and that energy get recorded and that get converted into digital number. That we will talk in another module about the interaction of energy with the atmosphere and earth. But here in this module, we are precisely talking about the purely the physics of remote sensing. What all science, what all the laws that we is being applied in, the, in this remote sensing, the science of remote sensing. As I mentioned before, the Kirchhoff law, the Stephen Boltzmann constant laws and different other laws. So, we will talk one by one. So, in order to understand the physics of remote sensing in a better way, let us understand it through the figures and diagrams. So, let us go to the blackboard. So, the very first issue is that of I was telling you the electromagnetic radiation. The energy which is traveling from the sun reaches the surface of the earth and hit the target as I told you that human as well as the natural feature. So, what happens if you see here suppose this is a sun the energy travels in all the direction right. So, what happens if the energy is traveling through a wavy fashion. So, that we have a simple formula to calculate the energy C is equal to nu lambda. What we have if I try to let you understand through uh, my fingers, this is the source of light energy that is this sun's energy which is traveling that is the speed of the light. This is the electrical field and this is the magnetic field. So, what we have that the sun's energy which is traveling in a wavy fashion like this. So, from one crest to another crest this distance is called the lambda. So, if you have one situation like this, another will be like this. Here what we see that lambda is, is large. So, this is a energy which is in the form of long wave radiation, long wave radiation. Whereas, this lambda where the distance is short that is called the short wave radiation, short wave radiation. That means, the sun's energy which comes to the surface of the earth that is in the form of short wave radiation. Whereas, when it strikes the surface of the earth and it goes back in the form of reflectance that is in a long wave radiation and the, with a simple formula, simple understanding that the hotter the body, shorter the wavelength, cooler the body, longer the wavelength radiation. So, as I told you that sun's energy which is the source here, suppose this is the sun energy here, it travels and that is the speed of light that we call is a C and if you see vertically up that is electrical field. And if we see this side is a magnetic field. So, what we have is, is the sun's energy which travels in a form of wave like this. And from one node to another node we call is a wavelength that is a lambda. If energy is hot this lambda distance bit of this lambda will be less, but the energy is low what will happen the energy this distance of the lambda will be both will be long. So, to calculate this sp speed of light, we have a very simple formula that we call is a c is equal to nu lambda, whereas c is the speed of light that is 3, uh, is 3 into 10 to the power uh, 10 meter per second. Now, to understand the sun's energy which comes to the surface of the earth, it comes through different spectrum. There is natural existing spectrum that is called electromagnetic spectrum EMS. So, it is naturally existing spectrum which nature has created. So, we want to see how much energy is coming in a particular spectrum. So, if I tell you in general that about 40 percent of the sun's energy which comes to the surface of the earth is in a form of uh, in the region that is called the visible region, visible region and the region in the spectrum 
which we have is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer. So, we want to see ki how much energy is coming in which region. So, 40 percent of total sun's energy comes in the visible region, remaining 50 percent of energy comes under the infrared region and about 9 percent of energy comes under the ultraviolet and about remaining 1 percent under the rest of the energy. Now, if you see, if I draw a spectrum to understand you in a better way, suppose this is the electromagnetic spectrum that we call is EMS. This is the visible region. If we go left side of it, we have the X-rays, gammas and other rays. That we have the short wave region. And if you go right side of it, we have the long wave region. That we have the infrared, IR, then we have the thermal, then we have the microwave and so and so. So, if you see the figure 1, what it shows? It shows the principal division of electromagnetic spectrum and in figure 1, you clearly see on the left side, the, the crest is, is very close by. If you see in the figure 1, the crest is something like this very close by. If you go right, the crest becomes the distance increases, that is the, the distance of the lambda increases. So, therefore, I precisely said this is a short wave region and this is a long wave region is starting with the visible and you can see in the figure 1 that there is a principal division of uh, visible region. This visible region is further divided into blue, green and red. Blue extends from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 micrometer, green extend from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 micrometer and red extend from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 micrometer. Better you can understand and see in the figure 1. Now another learning objective is to understand electromagnetic radiation quantities and the very first is called the radiant energy. In a very simple way, radiant energy can be defined as the energy carried by electromagnetic radiation. The radiant energy causes the detector element at a sensor to respond electromagnetic radiation. Number two, that is the radiant flux. Radiant flux is defined as the total power of radiation emitted by source that is the sun, it could be lamp or any object. The third issue is the irradiance. Now, we simply define irradiance, irradiance is a radiant flux intercepted by a plane, surface per unit area. It could be 1 square kilometer, it could be 1 square meter or anything. So, what does it mean that the total sun's energy when it reaches the surface of the earth in a per square using unit area, what is the energy that is being intercepted that is called the interception. And the, uh, the unit of the uh, this irradiation, irradiance is what per square a meter. Now, another issue is the existence that is the emittance. Emittance is defined as a radiant flux leaving a surface per unit area of the surface. The flux may leave a surface or it may uh, leave in all the direction within a hemisphere or a surface and it is denoted by m that is clearly shown in figure 5. Now, another issue is that of solid angle. Solid angle can be defined, it is a cone angle subtended by the proportion of the, of the spherical surface at the center of the sphere as shown in figure 6. Now, radiant intensity, radiant intensity of a point source is given a, a direction in the radiant flux per unit solid angle of the source in that direction. That means, energy which is living in a particular direction through the cone angle that is called the radiant intensity. Unit of radiant intensity is, is what per stair radian as shown in figure 7. Now, another issue under the heading that is we call is the physics of remote sensing is a radiance is defined by the radiant flux per unit solid angle leaving an extended source. If you see the solid angle cone, if you go away that is the extended portion which is leaving. So, that is the extended source in a given direction per unit projected area of the source in that direction that can be clearly seen in the figure 8. So, friends what all I have explained you before in short that is radiant energy, radiant flux, radiant intensity, irradiance, radiant em em emittance and radiance that can be clearly shown through diagram in figure 
9 which makes you a comparative understanding and comparative analysis of the terminology that is being used in the physics of remote sensing. Now another issue under this uh, e-learning module is Lambertian surface which is or the plane source or the surface for which radiance L does not change as a function of angle of the view is called Lambertian which is known as perfectly diffuse surface. For a Lambertian surface what we have existence M is mu into radiance L. Now second issue under this is the spectral quantities. The spectral quantities that is spectral electromagnetic radiation that is the electromagnetic spectrum consists of continuous frequencies or the wavelength of each of which carry a share of total radiant flux. Now the energy which travels from the sun reaches the surface of the earth as I told you through uh, that crosses the atmosphere and then it reaches the surface of the earth. So in that process there are other phenomena that takes place. One is called hemispheric reflectance, transmittance and absorpt absorptance. Now to understand the hemispheric reflectance which is defined by the ratio of reflected existence of the plane to irradiance on the plane it can be expressed as rho is equal to reflected energy m upon irradiance e. The hemispheric reflectance that is a tau is defined as a ratio of transmitted energy leaving the opposite side of the plane. It can be represented as tau is equal to transmitted m upon irradiance e. And the third is hemispheric absorptance that is alpha which can be denoted as a fraction of incident energy which is absorbed by the energy is given as a formula alpha is equal to 1 minus tau minus rho. For a perfect black body reflectance transmittance are 0 and absorptance is unity that is 1. Whereas for perfect white body absorptance and transmittance are 0 and reflectance is unity. But in reality there is no perfect black body, there is no perfect white body that means there is something in between white and perfect white and perfect black and that we call is a grey bodies. Now let us understand another issue under the physics of remote sensing is the thermal emission of radiation. Now all object at all temperature emit electromagnetic radiation at all wavelength as I said in the beginning of my lecture. The thermal emission of radiation is due to the conversion of heat energy which is kinetic energy of the random motion of the particles of the matter into electromagnetic energy. Thermal emission of radiation depends on two parameter, one is absolute temperature and second is the uh, emissivity. The total thermal radiation from a body increases with the force power of temperature that is T. The absolute temperature is given by T is equal to 273 temperature in degree centigrade is a unit of degree Kelvin. The emission, emissivity factor is the characteristics of the material a measure of its capability to emit radiation due to thermal energy conversion. The energy of a body depends upon the absorptivity ability. It is a fact that the good absorber or the good, uh, uh, good absorber are the bad reflector and the bad absorber are the, are the good reflector. Now let us understand the radiation principle. Before discussing various radiation principle, let us understand the radiation in the context of remote sensing. Basically it is energy that comes from the sun as I said before as mentioned above that it travels through some material or through space. There are mainly three types of radiation that is a light, heat and sound. Now to understand this let us understand Planck's law. Planck's law of a body radiation predicts the spectral intensity of electromagnetic radiation at all wavelength from a black body at a given temperature T. The spectral existence M for a black body can be calculated by the using Planck's law that is M is equal to Ci minus 5 exponential 2 up, C2 upon T minus 1 into uh, and the minus 1 where C1 and C2 are constant that is a wavelength and T is the absolute temperature. We all know that spectral existence of a body is not the same at all wavelength and the spectral existence is low 
both at short and long wavelength region. Now let us understand this same through this figure. What we have on the left side, we have the short wave, short wave region 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 micrometer and if you go right side, we have the larger wavelength region. Now what we see here is that on the short wave wave region, the spectral radiance that is existence is, is high and it increases with the increasing wavelength region. But its wavelength is, is uh, spectral radiance reaches maximum somewhere in between 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometer and as we go right side on the longer wavelength region, the spectral radiation reduces. Now another law that is important to understand that is Stephens Boltzmann law. It states that the total radiation emitted by a black body in the entire spectromagnetic spectrum is obtained by integrating the area under Planck's distribution curve which is directly proportional to the uh, 4 power of the absolute temperature that is m absolute black body is equal to rho t to the 4. Another issue is the spectral emissivity which is also very important in a remote sensing data acquisition which states that there are three basic radiation law as described earlier holds good of the black body. All other substances are characteri characterized by the spectral emissivity which can be defined as a ratio of spectral existence of a material to spectral existence of a black body at the same temperature is expressed, expressed as follows. The lambda is equal to A that is the material of a body of object degree Kelvin upon material lambda or that is a black body uh, that is in the form of degree Kelvin. If you know the spectral emissivity of a black body is spectral existence total existence and the wavelength of the plank, uh, peak emission can be easily determined. Now let us understand the Kirchhoff law. In order to understand the emissivity, we need to know the Kirchhoff law. The law states that the spectral emissivity of the material is equal to the spectral absorptivity that is lambda. E lambda is equal to phi lambda. It means that if a black body is capable of emitting certain radiation, it will absorb that radiation when exposed to it. The value of emissivity E varies between 0 to 1 which depends on the dielectric constant of the material. It, its temperature, wavelength and the surface roughness. For a clear water emissivity is between 0 0.98 to 0.99 that is very high spectral emissivity. Healthy vegetation, green cover which has spectral emissivity between 0 0.96 to 0 0.99, wet solid is 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 and dry vegetation 0 0.88 to 0.95. The emissivity is characterized, characterized by material can be summarized as follows. For a black body emissivity will be unit that is 1 at all wavelength. For a grey body it is less than equal to 1. For imperfect black body that is perfect reflector emissivity will be 0 whereas all other body emissivity is a function of wavelength. So friends, uh, today I have tried to demonstrate, try to teach you about the basic physics of remote sensing where we have discussed different laws, different characteristics of energy, sun's energy which travels. We have talked about radiance, we have talked about uh, irradiance, we have talked about different laws, physics of laws, Planck's law, Kirchhoff law, Stephen Boltzmann constant. These are very important in order to understand the remote sensing. Although as a student of geography, as a student of geology or as a planner, when you are dealing with the remote sensing satellite data, we do not need to know exactly understand these laws. We do not need to mug up these laws and these things, but at least you should know what all is this, what are the signs behind this that is very important. So therefore, based on those objectives, based on those you know, uh, uh, issues, I was trying to understand, trying to let you these laws. So these laws, I hope that with uh, reading these module, you will get to know an idea and the glimpse although you are not may not be the student of physics you know you may not be a student of other uh, science you may be a student of maybe humanities languages or 
any other social sciences, but we should you should have clearly got some of the exposure, some of the understanding what all it is, how it functions, how it operates and how this energy, the sun's energy is being used and applied in the science of remote sensing which is very important. So, I do hope that you may have got some insight uh, through this lecture and you can keep on reading the module which is there on the website of UGC that will give you more clear and detailed understanding. Thank you very much for your patience.